Our salvation in Jesus Christ is our only hope of not being deceived by the same serpent that lied to Eve in the garden. The Bible explicitly tells us that the devil was a murderer from the beginning and that he has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. The word also teaches us that he was a liar from the beginning and that he is the father of lies. The book of Revelation reminds us that because he deceives the world, that he will be thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur with the beast and the false prophet, and they'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. There is nothing that the devil would like more than to deceive every human being so that they will suffer with him for all eternity. But the word teaches us, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So as children of God, we should sow into the things of the Spirit. We should sow into godly things. We should sow into the truth of the gospel, not the lies of this world. We should turn our ears to the true gospel preached in the Bible, one whereby you pick up your cross and serve Christ. We should turn away from so-called men and women of God who only preach a feel-good gospel, one that only encourages but never convicts, one that only uplifts but never calls for repentance and obedience. Now, the most important thing is that we should be spending our time and energy chasing after the Lord. Because the more we know Him, and the more we know truth, the more easily we can identify deception. Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2 say, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. You are blessed when you don't sit and entertain scoffers. Don't sit with them or break bread with them. Of course, do your Christian duty, which is to love all people and share the gospel of Christ, but do not sit or get into a state of being relaxed when you are around a scoffer. They will pull you down. The dangerous thing about a scoffer is that their sole aim is to make you doubt. They plant seeds of doubt. That's their mission. It's simply to spread doubt. They want you to question everything about the Lord. They want you to question 1 Thessalonians 4.17, which says, Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. They want you to question Revelation 3.10. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. They want you to question the word of God, but we should resist such a person. Protect your faith. Protect yourself by not exposing yourself to people who purposely come to trip you up. Instead, focus on living a life that is pure and pleasing to Jesus. Focus on doing all you can to put this flesh under subjection. In fact, the Bible tells us how to prepare for the coming of the Lord in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. And count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given him. We, as children of God, should be found spotless and blameless, in peace, that is, inwardly calm with a sense of spiritual well-being and confidence, having lived a life of obedience to Him. Well, I believe that when it appears to be impossible, when life is at its darkest, this is when you should call out to the Lord. David experienced days like this quite often. He must have, because all throughout the Psalms, there is this theme of calling out to the Lord. I mean, think about it. How many times do we read something along the lines of, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. 
to my God I cried for help. Or you might read something like, Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Today, dear listener, I want to encourage you to call on the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 5, verses 1 through 12, Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. For you are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. With you, evil people are not welcome. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful you, Lord, detest. But I, by your great love, can come into your house. In reverence I bow down toward your holy temple. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they tell lies. Declare them guilty, O God. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Saints of God, there is a name that holds power. There is a name that chases away demonic spirits. There's a name that brings light in the midst of darkness. And that name is Jesus Christ. As followers of Jesus, we are called to live differently from the rest of the world. Our conduct and our character will only be completely transformed when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord over our lives. That means we can stop seeking revenge. That means we can react to persecution in a godly way. We can love those who hate us. We can pray for those who persecute us. These are hard things, and they certainly don't come naturally to us. However, Matthew 19 verse 26 says, But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. On our own, we couldn't possibly live up to God's holy standard. But praise God that His Holy Spirit dwells in us, empowering us each and every day to live righteously. He's able to do amazing things through us, things that we couldn't possibly accomplish on our own. Nothing is too hard for him.